your host and talented comedian, Emma Pine. to be funny as well. <laughs> no pressure. Well, hello! What a beautiful crowd! I can only see the first row, but I'm assuming. <laughs> so, welcome to the 10th Annual IDs! Yeah. The Idlewild International Festival of Cinema Awards 2019. So, what an awesome week this has been. Wow. Give it up for yourselves, the filmmakers. This is really Without all of you and your incredible talent, we would not be here. So thank you. I first came to this festival in 2015 when I was part of a film called Solitary, a British film. And we loved everything about this festival. Not because we won lots of awards. That didn't help. But this festival is awesome. It really is the greatest little film festival on earth, isn't it? Would you all agree with that? Now, if you're hearing an accent, it's because I'm originally from Ireland. Yeah, do we have some Irish people in the house? Come on. Wow. Thank you. I'm also five foot nothing. This is what happens when your mother is a smoker during pregnancy. And your father is a leprechaun. Um, I started my acting career, I'm also an actress as well as a comedian, and I started my acting career in Ireland and London many years ago. Actually, not, not that many. Showing my age now. A couple of years ago in Ireland, I started my acting career. And now I've lived in LA for nine years. I, I hate it when people go, so, what brought you to LA? The hell do you think brought me to LA? <laughs> Right? The same thing that brings every other wide-eyed young woman to LA. I was looking for a plastic surgeon. <laughs> but I'll tell you what's hard about living in LA when you're from Ireland. The time difference. Like, whenever I call home when it's 10 a.m. in LA, it's 2003 in Ireland. <laughs> For any directors out here, that was also my audition. <laughs> so this festival began 10 years ago with the creative vision of one man. Please welcome the founder and director of the Idlewild International Festival of Cinema. He's also an award-winning director in film and commercial commercials. Please give it up for Mr. Stephen Savage. Submissions. I was teaching at AFI at the time, and 
I decided I would just put things on bulletin boards and say I need movies and the word of mouth got around and pretty soon uh, we had enough to show 100 films that first year and we were very successful. But after that I knew I would need some help because I'm no businessman. And um, I found a young lady who said, yeah, I can help you grow this. And without her, it would have never happened. So as I've been doing all week, I'd like you all to give a big round of applause to uh, our uh, executive producer, Ms. Trinity Houston. So without further ado, why don't we get on with it? Because I know you're excited. Um, the Faulkner Award. It's, uh, it's named after uh, a man named Tim Faulkner and his wife, Jody Faulkner. And uh, uh, they were Idlewild locals who were unlikely patrons of, patrons of the arts. Um, they would do things like there was an artist who was trying to sell his woodworking and he was having trouble paying his rent. He had two kids and a wife who was also working at a restaurant trying to make ends meet. And uh, he needed to put together enough work and have enough money to go to this art show so he could start selling his work. And the Faulkners wrote him a check and said, here's your gas money, here's your hotel money, go do it. And that they did that year after year. They're both uh, passed away now, unfortunately, but they were able to see the film festival's first two years, so we're, we're really grateful for that. So the Faulkner Award is pretty much given to um, is pretty much given to an Idlewild uh, local who um, or an, an organization or entity in Idlewild that gives back to the community in whole and from their heart and constantly. And uh, this year, we'd like to give the Faulkner Award to hold on. The Idaho Rotary Club. Is 
uh, an amazing actress. You've seen her in so many TV and film uh, shows. She's, uh, you'll recognize her from the Hangover 1, 2, and 3 movies. A very funny, funny lady. Uh, Ms. Sandra Curry will be accepting the <laughs> single person here and was so appreciative of getting this award, especially because of Louise Park and Wendy Jo. And Wendy Jo is part of the Actors Studio also. And still to this day, Barbara continues to inspire all of us. And she is working on a new project. And every single week, she is there to teach, to learn. She does ballet classes twice a week. And she really is an amazing inspiration for all of us. And I know she was so thrilled to get this award because she was proud of the Ivy Awards and what Stephen Savage has done. And she sends her love to everybody. Thank you so much. Um, uh, God, I have nothing prepared. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> the next award is for Best Editing. Um, and the winner is, actually, we've got three winners. So, Best Editing in the short film category is Cat Dex. <laughs> Uh, 
for some of the best jazz uh, musicians in the 60s, 70s, and 80s, including Miles Davis. And uh, we're very honored to have Marshall, uh, Marshall's name on uh, our trophy. So the Marshall Hawkins Awards for Best Original Score. And again, come up, get your trophy, and get your picture taken. For Best Musical Score Short Film, The Assassin's Apprentice. And the best score of the future are going to be the same one. accept your trophy and have your picture taken. The award, the, the winner for the Juan Ruiz Anchi Award for Best Cinematography Short Film, Socorro.
and the award goes to the power of love. This was the best new media award. Best new media award, and it was the winner was power of love. Signals. You've seen her on uh, Longmire and so many other shows. Um, Irene and I had come up with this idea to start uh, sort of a, a foundation to uh, help Native American kids, um, youth, uh, 15 to 22, uh, learn the art of filmmaking and actually get them practical jobs in the film business. So that's what the Native, uh, the Summerhawk Native Film Award is all about. To present the award is a Filmmaker friend of mine who uh, his work uh, within his own Native American community and within the filmmaking community itself is very it's exemplary. Um, so I would like to bring up to give the award uh, my good friend, Mr. Albert Chacon.
today. <laughs> um, thank you to the Iowa Film Fest for giving us this opportunity to tell our stories, and we did it through Wolf Dog. And thank you to the to the Monable for representing the Native Americans and for people of us to tell our stories. I have, um, <laughs> I just want to thank you for clapping for me. <laughs> and being here with my daughter, so thank, um, just this whole opportunity of being able to do this. <laughs> Or short, and the winner is not your skin. for best documentary feature and the winner is Journey Home. short film <coughs> and the winner is Tell Tale Heart.
So our next category is our Golden Era Humanitarian Film Award. Golden Era Productions is a big sponsor of this film festival. They believed in us from the very beginning. And we're so happy to have Golden Era as a sponsor. And uh, this is an organization that believes in so many great causes, including one close to my heart, which is uh, returning uh, veterans and, um, and the uh, misuse by pharmaceutical companies and, and uh, basically the VA hospitals. And uh, they've done some amazing work in many other areas, but that's one close to my heart. So go ahead, please thank you for all of your amazing people. So I, I'd like you to, because of, because you're also uh, close and uh, dear to our hearts here at the festival, I would like to the representative is today from Golden Era to actually say a few words. So the Golden Era Humanitarian Film Award goes to Breathe Brianna. value of human life, just very simply. The humanitarian filmmaker maker needs to have both the courage and the wisdom to be able to have a long-term impact on the betterment of this planet. So, um, here is the winner. speech award, but um, don't worry, we're going to be getting to speeches soon. And, uh, this is, um, as someone who teaches um, actors, this is an award that I'm very proud that we give out. Most uh, smaller festivals don't give this award out, but big ones do, and we're glad we did. This is for Best Ensemble Cast. This is where one or two actors in the uh, film are just, it's just, there's not enough, uh, um, there's so much camaraderie and so much good um, intention with a group of actors that you you can't just pinpoint one out. So um, we like to give the ensemble awards for to say congratulations and slap on the back on a job well done for the entire cast of the movie. So best ensemble cast. Huh. Let's see. Best ensemble cast for short film. Sorry for your loss.
The first is Aramis Gomez for all. speech awards, so you're going to be able to hear some people actually talk. <laughs> the award for Best Supporting Actress in a Short Film goes to Dada Sala for Stars and Thunder. <laughs> for a featurette goes to Angelica Quinn for Eden. She was awesome. She looked like looked like the, one of the stars as the mother, and it was actually one of her first films ever. So this was a really she's been really excited for this. And the award for best supporting actress for a feature film, and the winner is Julia Parker for IRL.
really nice that he uh, he got this one. Stephen, thank you, Ottawa. Best Supporting Actor in a Featurette. And the winner is Cornell Womack in Grimshaw. <laughs> share a screen with him. Uh, his acting made me better, it made the, the production better, it made everything about the film better. So uh, I'm super grateful to have had him a part of this and he is going to be excited about this award. So thank you. Woo! Best Supporting Actor in a Feature Film. The winner is Luis, Ru Ru Luis Ruiz Woo! in Frontera. expensive you fly yourself out and everything so we're always grateful that at least there's somebody to represent um, the actor or the filmmaker who can't come so again let's have a big hand for all our support and, actors and, and, and thank you filmmakers for accepting for them we appreciate it because that way we don't have to pay postage and send it to them. <laughs> um, this next award is something that's um, it's kind of it's kind of close to my heart. In fact, it's very close to my heart. Uh, Christophe St. John, who we just lost recently, was a very good friend to myself and to the film festival. He was a member of our grand jury, and he and I met um, for lunch on the Paramount lot um, only a month before he passed away. And he was looking forward to the film festival. And yeah, it's really hard for me to um, even think about it yet. It just seems so numbing. I, before we give out the first ever Christoph St. John Award, I would like to bring up a friend of mine uh, who was also very close to Christoph. Um, you know her from such great things as Pretty Little Liars and uh, uh, going back to uh, Walker, Texas Ranger and so uh, fame, so many great shows that she's been on. I'd like to bring up my friend Nia Peoples. In certain ways, you get to know them in ways that you otherwise wouldn't or other people couldn't. Because as actors, our jobs are to live truthfully under imaginary circumstances. And what that allows us to do is dig deep and imbue our characters with the essence of who we are. So even though he was a lying, cheating bastard to me on that show, he brought humanity to the role. And this, Christoph was deep, and even with the troubles that he went through in his own personal life, as we all do, he continued standing strong and delivering.
for millions of fans all over the world, and that does not come without a cost. You know, recently I, um, I saw A Star is Born, and I'm familiar with the story. I've seen it, you know, I've seen it in its older versions many times. And then in the opening sequence of that, you've got Bradley Cooper up there playing to tens of thousands of fans, screaming his name, accolades, yes, because of the inspiration that he gives to them. And then you cut to him leaving there, and they're screaming, he's moving his way through the crowd, and they're, the crowd is just coming on, packing down on him, and we love you. He gets in the car, we love you, shh, silence. All that action is happening outside the window, and suddenly we are sitting in his aloneness, feeling the pressure of all that inspiration you've created and all those people who trust you to bring it forth. And yet, how many of those people can he trust to be there for him? It's, it was an interesting moment for me, and I wept. What we do does not come without a cost. And what I want to say to you is that that is the power as filmmakers that you wield. You have the power to not only open up and change people's perspectives mentally, but to make them feel that perspective, to make them feel alive, to bring them back to the heart space and remind them that they are human beings, and we all are, and we feel. That is the power that you have in your hands. And you know, being independent filmmakers, it does not come without a cost. And so, I want to say to you that your willingness, just your willingness, to bring forth what you have within you, and the, the thing that you need to express is changing things. You are moving humanity. You are doing a powerful thing that cannot be measured by ticket sales, and it cannot be measured by critical acclaim. You're doing it by being it. And so on behalf of and in honor of Christoph, cheers to you. So this award, the Christoph St. John Award, is going to be given every year from now on, as long as we exist, in Christoph's name. And it's going to go to, the, to a person who, in the entertainment field or not, is able to inspire against all odds because they, they made something happen. And they also, while they were striving, they remember that there are other people in their lives. It's not all about them. The winner this year of the first ever Christoph St. John Award is a young lady who's just recently done that. She's an actress. Um, she's one of those people who always thinks of others, even when she's striving to further her own career. And recently, against a lot of odds, she not only became fulfilled one of her dreams, but became a model uh, cover girl on a major magazine. And while she was doing that, while she was making that happen, all the while she was raising money for a cause that she believed in, which is a returning warrior's cause. And um, again, when somebody can rise above everything, just against everything, you know, against stereotype, against uh, people telling you you can't do it, 
and this young lady has impressed me personally, and so I've decided, we decided as a film festival, the first ever Christoph St. John Award will go to Janelle Ten. Oh. 
I'm wishing I had a shot of whiskey there in the intermission. Did anybody else? Yeah? <laughs> Should be keeping up. Whiskey all the way He's got the whiskey. I need so, some of yours. <laughs> we're going to do a little bit of uh, uh, housekeeping here. We've got a couple of things we're going to do before we move on to our Mary Austin uh, Women in Independent Film Awards. First of all, what I'd like to do is bring up a lady who, um, when I see uh, when I see Kayla who is singing here um, as an actress, she's uh, she plays the lead role of Ramona in California's official state outdoor play. And when I was asked to uh, to write a new script for a new millennium for the the play that's approaching its hundredth year, um, the visionary director who who actually directs Ramona, I can, I'm the film director. I wouldn't know how to handle 300 people in the cast. Um, the director is here. I'd like to just have him stand up, Mr. Dennis Anderson. Is here. When it's just opened up their hearts and accepted it. And Kayla, when she reads my words, along with another actress who's also here who plays the Senora, I'd like to have her stand up. Miss Kathy Anderson is here. <laughs> Um, about power of women in film and writing and acting and um, this this play really has I'm so proud that I, I was able to pull it out that I wrote such strong female roles but they wouldn't be anything without the strong actresses that play them so thank you ladies for bringing my, my words to life now I'd, I'd like to bring up a lady who's um, uh, the former president of the Ramona Bullock Association, but still she is the mover and shaker within the organization. And she's gonna, uh, she's got a little something special for you. Um, again, if you haven't seen Ramona, it is uh, California's official play, and you should come out and see it. So I'd like to introduce you to Miss Lori Van Arsdell. Yeah. for letting us call your attention to something that is so special, not only for California, but the whole country. I want to just tell you a quick history. The woman that is way back and behind this whole story, his name is Helen Hunt Jackson, and she was a most incredible woman in her day. She was widowed at that very young age, and her children both passed away. She was remarried, and she was quite a writer and her second husband encouraged her to keep writing. And one day she was back east with her friends, and back in those days they were rock stars. And her and her rock star writer friends, Emily Dickinson, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow, were at a meeting and Chief Standing Bear came in and he said, we need your help. We're being thrown off our land. And she was incensed. And she said, this can't be happening but she found it was happening all over the country. So she chronicled it and she did a, did a Century of Dishonor book, wrote it and handed it to every congressman and every senator in Washington and said, you need to do something. Keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, that was in 1881. You need to do something. They didn't do much, but they did hire her to do a report and she came out here to California and she traveled around to study what was happening with our mission tribes, including our Saboba tribe, which she's greatly responsible for them staying on their land. And she decided, she sent that report in and they still did nothing. <laughs> At that time, she remembered her friends had written Hiawatha and Uncle Tom's Cabin, and she decided to write a book that would move the hearts and minds of this country. And she sat down as if she were possessed and started writing December 9th of 1883 and finished the third week of March of 1884. And that book was wildly popular throughout the whole country. It's never gone out of print and is responsible for thousands of people coming to California. And in the teens, 20s, and 30s, there were five movies made. They were silent movies of, at first, one of which ran right here in the 20s. The first three were silent, the second two were, were talking movies. They were very, very popular. 
And in between all of that, the communities of Hemet and San Jacinto decided to do a play. And we hired a gentleman from Palm Springs. We actually went to steal his ideas, and instead we hired him. <laughs> and they, he found the most incredible acoustical canyon. And that is now the Ramona Bowl Amphitheater, seating 5,500 people. And we, are, we first did the play in 1923, and have been doing it ever since. And there's upward, upwards of 400 in our cast, Stephen. Uh, and every year we put on this incredible play with this incredible message. And we'd like to invite all of you to come. In fact, when you leave today, we're going to give every single one of you a ticket to come back and see Ramona next month. So it's April 13th, 14th, 27th, 28th, and May 4th and 5th. You'll never forget it. Thank you very much. The actual winners, and I'm going to actually let them give a speech because we passed them over. So the winner of the best new media award goes to the power of one. to explain who Mary was, and then we'll give out the awards. Mr. Doug Austin. I'll just take a moment of your time. She was an activist. She was also a concert pianist and violinist. She loved humanity. He loved children and animals. She was the healthiest person I ever knew. She was a, a vegetarian. She went to yoga. She walked. She did acupuncture. And she died at 61. Oh. Which broke my heart. We were together 30 years. And the reason I bring that up, not to be sad, at the end of her life, I took care of her the last day of her life. I said, would you do anything different? And she simply said, I would have that ice cream. <laughs> So I'm suggesting to you, while you're living your life, make sure you do. The award was named after dear Mary. She would never understand all the hoopla. She wanted to stay in the back and just serve humanity. We hope these awards serve women. It's designed to acknowledge women in their maturity, 30s, 40s, and 50s. Mary felt sometimes that women in their maturity were overlooked. Well, not in this group. Yeah. The talented women in this room would impale all men's hearts not only with the viewing, but the great spirit they possess, and I thank you very much. the Mary Austin Awards, please welcome the creator and director of FemaleFilmmakers.org, Mary Lou Sander.
Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. <laughs> it is my mission to build community and have a platform for women in film to empower and employ each other. Therefore, I created FemaleFilmmakers.org. And, yeah. the theme, and in the theme of empowering female filmmakers, it is my great honor to bestow the Mary Austin Award to the following. Please pick up your award and then go over to get a picture. This is non-speech awards. <laughs> We're here to help. Please come help. I've never done this before. Is it okay that I'm a man? <laughs> All right. The Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Directing in the Featurette is Mi Amor, Jennifer. Yeah. Oh, she knows who she is. <laughs> Excellence in screenwriting in a short film, Boxed. <laughs> Mary Austin Award in Excellence in Producing in a Feature Film, IRL. IRL, Molly Future. Please excuse me for butchering his name. <laughs> The Mary Austin Award in Excellence in Producing in a Featurette, Queer and Southern God, Melissa Tuckett. The Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Producing in a Short Film, Sorry for Your Loss, Lauren Bear. The Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Screenwriting, Feature Film, Acceptable Damage, Fiona Whitelaw. The Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Screenwriting, Featurette, Take My Hand, Eileen Grubba. The Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Cinematography, IRL, Sarah Phillips. The Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Directing Documentary, Melinda. The Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Directing Feature Film, Prince Harming, Marianne. And last but not least, the Mary Austin Award for Excellence in Acting, Janelle Tana. I've been asked to explain it one more time, so I'm going to do it because I'm really proud of it and so is a lot of other people. So thank you so much for your support, Stephen and Trinity. It is my mission to build community and have a platform for women in film to empower and employ each other. Therefore, I created FemaleFilmmakers.org. It's an organization that um, just mentors each other and gives each other opportunities for employment. And I'm quite proud of it. It's been a couple years and there's about over... Almost 4,000 women in LA in the group so far. So, thank you so much. I need my filmmakers to join me. Uh, Lena and Paul Allen, please. The introverts are staying seated. You're on your own. <laughs> And on 
honestly, the, the journey to making this film has been amazing. And just saying yes to the creative process, to telling the story and finding that story, that inner voice that each of us has that compels us to invest our blood, our sweat, our tears, and our joy. And our money. And our money. <laughs> yes. So thank you all, and thank you Paul, thank you Alina, thank you all the cast and crew, thank you Idlewild, and thank you for the love of independent film for making this possible. goes to Sarah Bauer, This Little Death. And I will be accepting the award, although I'm not Ms. Bauer. <laughs> the award for Best Actress in a Feature Film goes to Jasmine Hyde, The Unseen. Charles Sharman Cox in Telltale Heart. Directed 
Chase in this film. Um, Chase was also the producer and the writer of this feature film, and uh, he really put his heart and soul into this film. Uh, and it was a pleasure to get to direct him and work through that process with him. Uh, he wishes he was here today, but I accept this award on his behalf. Thank you. All right, moving on to the Indie Spirit Awards. Um, I actually have a couple of Indie Spirits, but I swear to I don't think that these awards, uh, well, it mine mean a lot to me because they basically say, good job, pat on the back, but mostly they say, just keep going, keep making films, keep doing what you do, because eventually um, you're definitely going to hit on something amazing. So um, as you come up, um, I'm confused about how this is. I don't know what that means. I'm just going to. So come up, get your trophy, get your picture taken, please. The Indie Spirit Awards go to Best Featurette, Baby Steps. Tony in Baby Steps. The Indie Spirit Award for Cinematography and Editing goes to The Hurt. Comedy Short goes to First Kill. Indie Spirit for Best Director goes to Jake Thomas Arm um, um, Roster for Fonterra. The Indie Spirit Award for Best Documentary goes to The Mayor. Mr. 
Trinity Houston streaming, streaming me out once again. Okay, we are back in the room. <laughs> the Best Director Award, the award for Best Documentary Director goes to Matthew Hossel for the world's most dangerous paper route.
Thank you so much, everybody. This is Um, thank you very much, Idlewild, uh, Mayor Matt. <laughs> Cutest mayor in the world. Um, this is our, actually my second time being here. I was here at the first Idlewild. So I'm glad to be back here 10 years later. And thank you very much. The award for best short drama film goes to take my hand.
Thank you. And now the award for best comedy feature film. I did. I looked. Envelope matches the, yeah, okay. And the winner is Abnormal Attraction. <laughs> It's, uh, it was, it's an honor just to be nominated, as uh, many of us know here, and uh, to, to win something is uh, even more special, especially with the great films that we were able to see this weekend. Um, you know, and uh, I couldn't have done it, we couldn't have done it without our great team here, um, without our great amazing cast, um, so I want to thank them uh, for all of that. And uh, you know, it was a fun trip coming over here from New York. And uh, we really enjoyed it. We want to thank everyone here from Idlewild, the festival. Uh, thank you.
festival. She's always on hand to represent them. Miss Rebecca Louisa Smith. Um, the fourth award tonight for the Unseen, and I'm really happy. This is, is a film that cost 100k to make. Um, they were originally going to have a budget that was 500k, but then things happened, and they made it, and they're very proud of it. And this is, shows that it was you know, really worth those awards. And there are not many speeches because they didn't email me, email, email me back, but I'm going to send all the pictures of the awards for them, and they should be very happy. But I'm very glad that it's got this award because it's um, obviously a big one for. For the, for the director and the producers. So thank you, Trina. Uh, this one's kind of a cool award. It's probably the best award of the festival, in my opinion. This is the Savage Award, the director's choice, festival director's choice award, best of festival. Um, it's kind of funny, but the lady representing this film is just up here and she's going to make the long walk again. <laughs> My choice for Best of Festival is Attrition. Thank you all for voting. And we're going to bring a special man back up to the stage who has, from the moment he stepped into office, actually even before he stepped into office, we can definitely feel changes in our little valley here. And we're so thankful when somebody is able to just step into a position and really get things done. And we can feel that ripple uh, throughout our whole entire county. I'd like to introduce the supervisor of the county, Chuck Washington. Well, thank you. Um, young lady that's come up here like, what, 23 times? <laughs> I feel like I should swap seats with her. Yeah. Or maybe she's getting her steps in. That was Leonard's joke, so I have to give credit where credit is due. Um, if you don't know me, I made a career of flying lots of passengers in airplanes across country back and forth for Delta Airlines. I don't have a creative uh, bone in my body. Um, and they actually frown on airline pilots being creative. <laughs> they actually give you a flight plan and say, no, do this. <laughs> and I'm happy to report that I had 100% success. <laughs> but that doesn't mean I can't love and admire artists. And um, I, I, I absolutely love film. I love the people who make them come to our community. I love being moved by film. I love the escape of film. Um, this season, all we're hearing about are the, the big films uh, that have hundreds of millions of dollars. Um, films like um, The Green Book or Bohemian Rhapsody. And those are great films. But there are small films, too. Um, that I'm just so moved. I had one, uh, one 
one award recipient came up and said he had 130 or 40 people on the cast and crew and no one got paid. That's love, that's passion. And, um, and so um, I want to express my deep gratitude to Stephen, uh, to Trinity, to Idlewild, which is in my district, um, most beautiful part of the county, stretches from Mount San Jacinto down to Temecula wine country and everything in between, and this beautiful valley here. And I want to thank um, the Hemet Mayor, Arnie Wright is here. <laughs> and to have this in this beautiful, historic Hemet Theater uh, is just absolutely stunning. So I won't go on. Um, we have an award to give, and it is the Audience Choice Award, and the winner is the Turnover. community. It's about community and it's about collaboration and we want to thank the festival staff, the people that viewed, and all of us that joined us on this journey. Thanks. someone that all film festivals have to sort of go through first to get to us and she does an amazing job and everyone all the filmmakers throughout the years that she's been with us love her we'd like to bring up our artist liaison miss andrea charles
um, all around the world, visual effects artists from Colombia, Mexico, Australia, and uh, you know, coming here to this uh, festival, it was, it was exactly what I needed. You know, just you know, there was so much love and uh, support, and, and so many people uh, that are wishing well, and uh, it's just so unexpected, and uh, it's just like. It's like it's not real right now, it's like surreal. So um, I didn't really have anything prepared, but I just wanted to uh, thank all, all the, the cast and crew uh, that worked on this film. And, uh, uh, I done a thank you all for watching the film and enjoying it. And uh, I just wanted to transport people to another world. And um, I'm just happy that I was able to do that. So thank you. Thank you, and we will see you again in 2020. Good night, everyone.